Okay, so let's start with a really simple depiction of what the system might look like. In this box here, we're going to put in the resources, things like the sun, water, nutrients, my little atoms here. These are the key things that plants need, the limiting resources that plants need in order to make them grow. Here's our little plant with its roots below ground, little leaves. We'll just call this one plant A. And the plants are basically utilizing the key resources from the environment, the sun, nutrients, and water. So now let's make our system a little more interesting. Let's add another plant, one that's also got leaves above ground, roots below ground here. We'll call this one plant B. And just like plant A, it's also trying to use the same resources. Below ground, they're trying to grab water or nutrients. Above ground, they're both going for sun. And really, whoever gets at these quicker, or more of them, is going to make fewer available for the other one. Basically, whichever of these two plants is more efficient at grabbing these resources, I'll make it in this case plant B, this big fat thick arrow, compared to plant A, will grow quicker and will basically outcompete the other plant. So really, the way plant A and plant B are interacting is indirectly through this shared pool of resources that they're both going for. This is going to be different when we look at other forms of interspecies interactions. So if you think about plants as being at the same trophic level, that is, they're both primary producers, they're both plants, these types of interactions are called lateral interactions occurring within, within the same trophic level and represent an indirect interaction through this shared pool of resources. Okay, so let's take a look at this situation. Let's start again with our resources at the bottom. Again, these are water, nutrients, sunlight. Here's our plant with the leaves above ground. Oh, look at this. Now I'm going to add some potato tubers at the bottom because this is maybe what we're trying to produce as farmers. And the flow of resources as we depict with this arrow from the resource pool to the plants. Now let's add a wrinkle to this. Let's add some herbivores, our little Colorado potato beetles right here. And now energy is moving or biomass is moving from the plants into this pool here, the herbivores. These are consumers of the plants, and therefore they represent another trophic level above that. So when the number of herbivores goes up, the amount of plants must go down because the herbivores are consuming those plants. I'm going to depict that with these plus and minus signs. Okay, let's make the situation even more interesting. Now let's add these little wasps here. These wasps are predators, or actually they're parasites, of the herbivores. And therefore, I'm going to draw these arrows that move from the herbivore circle into the predator circle. These can be predators, parasites, parasitoids, all a group of organisms that we will refer to as natural enemies. Basically, anything that has a negative effect on the herbivores are the enemies of those herbivores. So when the number of predators, parasites, these natural enemies increases, this has a negative effect on the abundance of the herbivores. And because there's fewer of them, there's going to be more plant biomass to go around. So there's a positive effect on the plants. And what this means is that there's an indirect positive effect of those natural enemies on the plants. We refer to this as a trophic cascade. And what this means is that there's an effect via feeding of one trophic level, the natural enemies, the predators, parasites in this case, on a non-adjacent trophic level, the plants. So again, this interaction here is called predation or parasitism, something like that. This one here is herbivory. And through the action of predators, we can get a positive effect on plants. Another way to say this is that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So if you're a plant, your enemy is the herbivores, your friends are going to be the predators and parasites because when they're around, you're going to get less eaten. And we refer to this as a trophic cascade. And this is a very fundamental concept in 
a lot of ecology, but also in agriculture, because the action of those natural enemies in your system is what's going to keep the, the population of those things that we refer to as pests down and your yield and your productivity up.